Among the ancient races of men, none were more talented weapon and armorsmiths than the Nahakarans of old. While not equal to the smiths of the dwarves or elves, their skill was still impressive. With the aid of the lich priests, many great and powerful weapons were forged in this time. At the empire's height, nearly every king, prince, herald, and tomb guard carried an enchanted blade. Swords that could destroy souls, blades that could supernaturally age their victims, spears that burned with the heat of the sun. All of these and more could be found plunging into the heart of Nehekar's enemies. In addition to their practical uses, these weapons also sometimes acted as badges of office. Their distinctive appearances would tell subordinates whose orders they should follow, as well as let enemies know which son of the great land was going to end their life. Oftentimes, the power of the weapon and the deeds of their wielder would combine to take on a legend of their own. The most feared of these weapons of office was the Flail of Skulls, held by the personal herald of Setra, the Imperishable. Initially used by Setra himself before his ascent to the throne, the Flail of Skulls is a truly impressive weapon. It is a massive flail, requiring two hands to effectively use. A gaggle of golden skulls hang from its golden haft by a set of chains. These chattering ornaments bite those struck by the flail, rending their flesh with gilded teeth even as the flail shatters bones and ruptures organs. Of course, in addition to its magical effects, the flail of skulls has all the capabilities of a mundane flail. By building momentum in the opening stages of combat, before the press of bodies makes it difficult to bring the weapon's full weight into bear, the Flail of Skulls can deliver an earth-shattering blow. Combined with its gnashing teeth, the weapon is incredibly dangerous to those struck by it, and even a single blow can slay monsters and heroes alike. The skulls adorning the Flail of Skulls are not simply morbid decorations. Instead, they are all that remains of kings laid low by the might of Kemri. These arrogant fools once believed they could defy Cetra's will, and their hubris was appropriately punished. When defeated, their skulls were stripped clean of flesh and encased in a golden coating. The newly minted skulls were then added to the flail, immortalizing the rebellious king's failures forever. Now they assist the flail of skulls as wielder in the humbling of other kings, and they are always happy to see another royal skull join their ranks. Of course, only those of kingly blood may be added to the flail. Even in death, the monarchy is given unique privileges. As previously noted, the Flail of Skulls is wielded by Cetra's personal champion. Currently, that honor lies with the Herald Nakaf, the 40th to hold the position. While more will be said about him in future videos, it is in large part due to his deeds that the Flail of Skulls has gained its infamous reputation. In his skilled hands, the weapon smashes bodies aside like cordwood, turning marauding orcs and northerners into red ruin. The only individual said to use the Flail of Skulls more deftly was Cetra himself, though this should come as no surprise. As Nakaf, and by extension the Flail of Skulls, isn't in Total War Warhammer, this brings us to the end of our overview of the Flail. I think, at least from an aesthetic perspective, this might be one of my favorite items in the Items of Warhammer series so far. I like the lore of the Throne of Power more, but there are a few things cooler than a skeleton smashing people with a bunch of golden king skulls attached to a staff. That's pretty metal right there, and a core component of what makes Warhammer so fun. It's simultaneously silly and badass, and I feel fairly confident that everyone who likes this game enjoys one or both of these aspects of it. Anyways, with the gushing aside, that brings us to the end of our video. Until next time, this has been Sigmar Strozen, signing off for now.